drive this way and get so. So when studying your scriptures, you're supposed to be paying attention to patterns. Because <clears throat> that'll help you understand your scriptures better. So when you go into the Book of Mormon, 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 2, you read, Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. And so you're supposed to know that the learning of the Jews is not the Christian Christ Jesus. Now, yes, Jesus is a Greek word from the Hebrew word Joshua, but nonetheless, that doesn't make Jesus real for the Jews. It doesn't make Jesus the Jewish Christ. It also says, and the language of the Egyptians. This is pre-Babylonian captivity Jews being referred to here. And so you need to know your history of the ancient Middle East. The Jews of Judah were not an independent nation. As you can see in current Israel, you have Israelis living in certain select places in the Middle East. And then you have Palestinians who are in Gaza. And you have Lebanese who are in Lebanon and, and so forth. And they're independent for the most part. But in this day and time, pre 6 100 BCE, the Jews in Judah were under the authority of Egypt, just like the United States of America. You have Utah, Judah, Judah, Utah, phonetically the same. That is not an independent nation. We are a state in the United States of America. The federal government controls the state of Utah. The state of Utah gives tribute to the United States of America. That's the method and process of the ancient days. And so, who's the Jewish Christ? Well, they tell you, if you keep reading. In verse 8, Lehi has his second vision. And you're supposed to catch on to the pattern matches with Joseph Smith history. The second vision. And you... Don't see the footnote connection until you get to the Christ. Because, in verse 9, one descending out of the midst of heaven, he beheld that his luster was above that of the sun at noonday. This is the Jewish Christ. The sun god at noonday. And so because we have Google search, life is easy for you guys. If you would but research. And so you type in Egyptian sun god at noonday. And on Google search, 
it shows raw. <sighs> Putting the World History Encyclopedia first. And this is incorrect. It's wrong. But in the parentheses that they show you, there you see Amun as noonday sun in parentheses. That part is correct. <clears throat> and they get the morning sun incorrect because they're not telling you about Ra as distinguished from Amun and Kefre, not Ra Harakti and Atum. But this is a whole nother issue. But at least you can go here and you see Amun, sun god at noonday. And so that's what you put in here in the Book of Mormon. And you'll see one of the pictures off to the right of that that shows Horus with the sun on his forehead. And it's red, not yellow. There's a reason for the season. <clears throat> and so, yes, there's a lot of Egyptian that you need to know now. But you at least found out it's Amun, who's being referred to in First Nephi chapter 1, verse 2. Nine. And so you see the footnotes below 9a. Joseph Smith History 117, 16 to 17 specifically in parentheses. So anybody recall what that is? Oh, that's that's the first vision, isn't it? There's these two personages who appear to Joseph Smith. And how are they described? So what are their names? Who appears to Joseph Smith in the Grove of Trees in the spring of 1820? According to the Joseph Smith history in 1838. Amun. Father Amun, son Amun. In the language of the Egyptians. And so also verse 30. Hmm, second vision? But th that that's Moroni, because you didn't bother to check the Joseph Smith papers that the church is telling you has been released. And you're supposed to check it to make sure our scriptures are accurate. Because the church tells you the Joseph Smith papers are the authoritative source, which means what they contain corrects our canon of scripture. And so it's Nephi, not Moroni. And how is Nephi described? The sun at noonday. That's a Amun. The God, Amun. Amun, God. In Hebrew, God is El. Amun, El. So, is there an Amun L in the learning of the Jews? Obviously. Obviously. <sighs> Second Nephi, chapter seventeen, taken from Isaiah. Hear ye now, O house of David. What is the sign of David? The double D's combined together to form the star of David. 
Oh, those silly Jews. If only they knew. It's not a star. It's the star of stars. The sun. The sun god at noonday. Because Isaiah is going to give us his name. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a conjunction in heaven. Which means he's giving you a star date. That's what a conjunction means. Behold, Virgo shall conceive Jupiter and bear Jupiter and shall call his name, there he is, Amon El, the sun god at noonday of the Egyptians, using a different culture and nation during the time period in which it was written. And so, uh, interestingly, if you knew Paleo-Hebrew, you would recognize that the I is similar to the A, in that it is the universal symbol of the sun. And then I can go on and tell you about how M and N refer to high priest and king, thus Melchizedek, Thus, Pharaoh of Egypt as son Amun on earth is Melchizedek. Now go to the story in Genesis where Abraham, after conquering the king and rescuing his brother Lot, or nephew Lot. Anyway, Lot, he then gives tribute correctly translated to Melchizedek because who owned the land? Melchizedek Pharaoh of Egypt <clears throat> okay so if we were to go to the second vision and keep reading get to verse 40 we see that Joseph Smith takes us to Acts and says that that prophet is our Christ well it's the learning of the Jews Christ therefore it's not Jesus and so you go to Acts and Acts takes you to Deuteronomy 18 15 through 19 the law of the Jews and here he is the Christ of the Jews in the law of the Jews this is the keystone of Jerusalem of Judah of the Jews like the Book of Mormon is the Mormon keystone Deuteronomy is the keystone of the Jews Here's their Christ. I just went over with you in the Book of Mormon who our Christ is. He's the same Christ as the Jews. He shall be a man like unto Moses. So why are Mormons defending the Jewish Christ as Christian Jesus. Are you familiar with the word anti-Semitic? Are you ref familiar with the replacement theory where white supremacist Christian nationalists chant Jews will not replace us are you familiar with the concept of hate? I 
I've already done the video the other week about how Deuteronomy is established in the Book of Mormon. You need to follow it. You need to know the law of the Jews. <clears throat> but what you have not done is your world religion history to know that Christianity is the great and abominable church. If you were to have read on in the first vision, just two more verses, you would have come across um, Son Amen telling Joseph Smith about Christianity. I was answered that I must join none of them, none of the Christian churches, for they were all wrong. And Son Amen, who addressed me, said that all their creeds And thus, the first creed of Christianity was Roman Emperor Constantine, 325 CE, after the New Testament had already been written in separate books, papyrus scrolls. They were not combined together into a single book. And yet Constantine comes around, forces bishops of congregations with these original documents for their religion, all different, all having a different interpretation of the nature and character of their Christ. And Constantine forced them to be one. And so, they had to give up their religion. They had to give up their Christ for the new Christ of Constantine. They named him Jesus, despite the prophecy. And they turned the scriptures of the Jews, yes, the New Testament, into literal history. And so now this Jesus creation, which is the nature and character Constantine had to create a new word for, because none of the bishops could agree. They would not give up the nature and character of their Christ. And they were all different. And so Constantine settled it. He was hot and cranky. It was during the summertime. And so he created a new word. Does not exist. He made it up. Hamuzion. It's there in the Greek text. In the Creed. And therefore it means, by definition, not real because he made it up the nature and character of Jesus of Christianity is not real but they turned the Jewish scriptures about their Christ in the future because they give star dates for when he's coming Now he's a literal historical character in the Roman period. And now, all of a sudden, the Jewish authors, who's writing about their Christ in the future, has now been murdered by Jews in the Roman period time. And so all of Christianity are anti-Semitic and want to destroy the Jews. Constantine weaponized Christianity to war against the Jews? <clears throat> In 600 CE, Islam comes along. Muhammad, 
says that he went to the top of the mountain, Utah, got revelation from Allah, and received the Quran, the law of Islam. He's now claiming to be the man like Moses of the Jews, whom the Jews give a date for when he's coming. So it's not Muhammad. But Muhammad is claiming to be the man like Moses. And he's formed a new religion. And what does this new religion do? They go around and murder and destroy if those don't convert to Islam. Enforcing Islam with the sword. And they call it peace. And so, have you not caught on by now? Brigham Young. He was missionary. He's supposed to go around and giving people the Book of Mormon in the learning of the Jews about the Jewish Christ. But what did he name his church after Joseph Smith was assassinated? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints claims he's still the second president you go to the Joseph Smith papers for the Joseph Smith history and oh look you have to click on the link because the they wouldn't let you know outright they wouldn't put the original the Church of Latter-day Saints and then you click on the link and it pops up to say Willard Richards inserted Jesus Christ Instead, they put Jesus Christ in the text with brackets, and then you click on it, and then it says inserted by Willard Richards. They're purposely trying to deceive you in the Joseph Smith papers. You have to pay attention and click on the links in the Joseph Smith papers. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was not the name of Joseph's church. And then you say, well, section 115, Travis. Nelson, over the pulpit of conference. Nope. That document is a forged document. Because Joseph Smith, in the Joseph Smith papers, for the Joseph Smith history of 1838, which was published in 1842 in the Times and Seasons it's not the name of Joseph's church and so therefore you have identified an anomaly even though you think you found a pattern the Joseph Smith papers says nope it's not a pattern match section 115 is an anomaly so then you run the test develop a theory and you have it tested and you come to a conclusion you do not bias your research by saying and trying to justify that it's Jesus somehow when you know it's supposed to be the learning of the Jews and sure enough section 115 is a forged document by Brigham Young and then you find out that Brigham Young didn't even put it in the Doctrine and Covenants until the year before he died in 1876. Hmm. 
this is how you do your research this is how you do study and the church doesn't want you to they tell you what to believe they tell you how to think they tell you how to feel you're supposed to read ponder pray get a feeling if it's not the right feeling you gotta keep read ponder and praying until you get the right feeling now it's correct that's not how it works you must manifest put back manifest get the right definition of manifest and so now do you understand why Joseph Smith calls Christianity an abomination in the sight of Amen L. Do you now understand what Joseph Smith is telling you that evil disposed and designing persons are militating against Joseph Smith? The Mormon War caused by who? The Danites. Who are the Danites? They were the first converts of Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball. And they put Brigham Young as the president of the Twelve to lead the church with only the keys of Peter, not the man like Moses. Because if you go to section 107, <coughs> verse 91, Joseph Smith telling Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball, who are in attendance, the duty of the president, which is Joseph Smith, of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church and to be like unto Moses and only him is a seer revelator translator and prophet not Brigham Young as president of the twelve in 1838 with the coup of Joseph Smith's church. See here, he's only getting licensed to be in the Quorum of the Twelve. Thomas B. Marsh is the president. Thomas B. Marsh would be chased out by the Danites to let Brigham Young be the president. And so, you then go to section 110. 110. Joseph Smith is in the Kirtland Temple. He's having visions again. Not literal history, learning of the Jews. And in verse 11. The heavens were opened un again unto us. And Moses appears. Joseph Smith is already the man like Moses. Now Moses is appearing and giving unto him the keys of Peter, James, and John. Gathering of Israel. Mm -mm. This is the keys of the Exodus. The man like Moses. What is the story of Moses as told by the Jews in the Jewish scripture? There's an exodus, but it's not literal history. It's a prophecy of their latter day Christ. Getting rid of a bunch of papers at once in one video. And so we can even go into the Book of Mormon. 
2 Nephi, chapter 3. Verse 6, for Joseph truly testified, saying, A seer, not a prophet? Well, in Samuel, before time, a prophet was called a seer. Joseph is before Samuel. Hmm. A seer shall the Lord my God raise up. There's a pattern match with Deuteronomy. who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins. And yes, we all know that it's Joseph Smith. His name shall be after Joseph and after his father. Joseph, Jr. But in verse 5, he obtained a promise of the Lord that out of the fruit of his loins, Men have seed. They plant the seed in a woman, and the woman sprouts, and the baby grows up to be fruit. Grows up. Little children are still sprouts. They are not a testimony. They cannot get a testimony. They have to work on it. it takes time. When they're an adult, when they're fruit. <sighs> That's the symbol of the doctrine. <clears throat> and so, is it the Holy Ghost that impregnates Mary? No, because the prophecy is seed. Holy Ghost doesn't have seed. It's not an immaculate conception. No silly Trinitarians. So is it non-Trinitarian? Well, first of all, it's the wrong name. But, no. It can't be an exalted Heavenly Father who can't be exalted because Jesus is the one who has to be resurrected first. Uh-oh, a confusion. Well, you see, Travis, on his planet, Heavenly Father had a Christ and actually was Christ. And then he, you know, became exalted. And then he's Adam, according to Brigham Young. And somehow condescended to be mortal and then die again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And then the other version, exalted Heavenly Father seed, impregnates Mary, and she doesn't die. <laughs> There's lots of stories of women dying, giving birth, but no. And so he's talking about Joseph Smith, obviously, here first. And so he has to clarify, not the Messiah of the Jews for the latter days. And then he says, nevertheless, to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord that the Messiah should be manifest, just like fruit, is the manifestation of a seed. Go back to Moroni chapter 10, 3 through 5 again. Put back manifest unto them. Who's them? In the latter days. Who is them? And they're going to be in bondage, they're going to be in darkness. And so, Doctrine and Governance, Joseph Smith explains yet again for Mormons who would simply but study their scriptures.
section 103 talking about the redemption of Zion in the latter days therefore I will raise up there's a pattern match unto my people them so who's them who's my people who's Joseph Smith talking about Who's the Christ for? A man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel. It's Amon El. His name is the symbol of the dates of the signs in the heavens of the latter days of his coming. And thus the signs of his coming and the dates of his coming are his name. Interchangeable. It's the casting of the shadow of the sun when it's eclipsed for the three days of darkness. They give you a star date because they occur within a constellation. And so it's a specific date, a specific place in the heavens, and it casts a shadow on a specific place on earth, and it gives the name of our Christ. The crossroads, because the three days of darkness cross with an X. The first second and the last they form the letter A in Paleo Hebrew script over a specific location on earth in the latter days and so the first is in the lion constellation at the star Regulus, the king star. Anybody familiar with Samson? What's the first death in Samson? The lion. Anybody familiar with the facsimiles of the book of Abraham? There's an attempted murder on an altar. What is the altar? It's a lion. The second is in Virgo. At the womb. We just had it. Passes over Utah. What's the second death in Samson? His first wife. She's burned with her father. The second day of darkness was an annular eclipse, the ring of fire. Facsimile number two. There's a ring around the hypocephalus. It's the Eye of Ra. Amun, the sun god at noonday. With a ring around it for an annular eclipse. Wow. 
Joseph Smith is more impressive, isn't he? And then the last one. On the back of the white horse. In Pisces. We did the Dagon video the other day. But that's not the lamb. Aries. That's where Jupiter is. Amon El is. Revelation chapter 19. So Samson, yeah. He dies. He's blinded. Notice that? The blinding of the eye of Ra eclipsed. But he is Jupiter. He's in the sacrificial ram constellation of Aries. Lamb, ram. But he takes out the Philistines of Dagon worshippers? He's a Danite by descent. Hmm. Interesting. Brigham Young converted the Danites. The Danites came with him, making him the president of the church, cooing Joseph Smith's church, to the Salt Lake Valley. Where Mormons, who do not go in an exodus, who stay behind, become a pillar of salt, of the great salt lake. The stars falling from heaven. Seeing the learning of the Jews yet? Sodom? Lot? Well... <clears throat> catching on because it's a lot of fun when you lift the Christian blinders from your eyes so imagine Superman 100 years from now humans on earth see the movies and TV shows of Superman and they decide that they're going to turn it into literal history. Superman is now a real person who lived in our day. hundred years from now they're looking back they're now calling Superman literal history. That he's real, he existed, he was on Earth and Somehow, one of the episodes, they believe, indicates that he's coming back to Earth for a second coming to save the people a hundred years from now. In our day, we would see those future people as stupid. And yet, that's exactly what Constantine did with Christians. Three post-it notes, one video.